Hi, this is Russell Stanard from teachertrainingvideos.com. Got a really simple video today. Some great ideas around working in Google Docs. And I presented these ideas at a conference the other day and a lot of the teachers got back and said, oh, Russell, I hadn't thought of that. I didn't realize you could do that. So I'm gonna show you some great techniques for getting students to collaborate together on Google Docs and also some really nice ways of summarizing and responding to their ideas. And they're gonna save you a lot of time as a teacher. Really hope you like the video, and as always, if you do, please like it, please share it with other teachers, and of course, please comment on it. Let's get started. So let me show you an example, and in this example, the students had to come on and add their ideas about the how they think education will evolve in the next three to five years. I wrote a simple art example, and then uh, Susie wrote an example, and then Yoli wrote an example, etc. Now, if we, after the students have written up their examples, what we can do is we can then ask the students to go back to the document, read some of the answers and reply to one person, okay? And so we can see that Octavio responded to me and Jose responded to Susie. Someone responded here but forgot to write their name. And then we can see that Yoli responded to Monica, etc. And this makes the, the activity way more interesting because it means that the students have to read the input of the other students and respond. And it's such a simple technique, but it's very effective when we're trying to get students to share ideas. So let me show you how I did that. I obviously went to my Google Drive because I'm using Google Docs. I clicked on New and I clicked on Google Docs. And the first thing I did was to give it a title. So for example, I've written here, what do you like about blended learning? And let's imagine that we've got 10 students. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a table and we're gonna make that table 11 down so and then two across okay and then I'm just going to click there now what I do is I ask the students to put their name here and then to write their comments on this side okay very simple and then what I normally do is I kind of just sort of demonstrate to them that they can write their comments here and you can even if you want perhaps one two three four five actually make the boxes bigger so that you're really making it clear to the students that you're expecting quite a lot of input but what I often do is I answer the first question myself to kind of give them an example of what I'm expecting and that can be a really good way of working kind of setting them a model now, obviously, the students will need to access this document, so how do we do that? So you need to share the Google Doc with the students. Click on Share. You come down to this second one here and click on here because the first thing you need to do is to change it to anybody with the link can comment. And then you click on copy link and done and then share that link with your students. The students can come on and write their answers and then a few days later, you can ask them to go back again and then respond to one other student or even respond to two other students. Once the activity is over, you can come on to here again and just change that to view. And that means that no one else can now add to the document. The document is closed. And this is a technique that I often use when working with um, Google Docs. This is another technique that I use, and it's one that I really like working with. This can really help your students and it can save you a lot of time. I've created a Google Doc and I asked the students in groups, uh, group A, group B, group C, to write the advantages and disadvantages of blended learning. And we can see that the different groups work together and wrote up their answers. Now, what I did at the end was simply after every group had written their answers, I read their answers and I simply recorded a summary of all the key points. So this shows to the students that I've actually looked at their content and it's also really useful for the students because they can listen to a summary of all the key points. Now we can actually click on this and actually listen to it. So I'm just gonna click here 
and we open it up onto the screen. Okay, um, just to go through some of the points that you were making today, really interesting first point about blended learning in terms of the Okay, and you can see how easy it is for me to do, or cer certainly how easy it is to play the audio. I'm now gonna show you how easy it is to actually create that recording. So we're on the home page of vocaroo.com. This is a technology that I used to use a lot, then I stopped using and I've gone back to using it. I, I first presented this about 15 years ago. Um, all you need to do is click on this button here to start a recording. So let's imagine I've read all of the inputs from the students and I'm gonna summarize the key points. Okay, just want to go through the key points from today. Really nice point you're making about blended learning, uh, encouraging students to be more independent in their learning. Number two, nice to see you comment on the idea that blended learning can link to the workplace and give students skills that they might use uh, in their future work and job situations. Nice to see you making the point about the variety that blended learning offers, bloody, bloody, blah. I won't do any more, the recording's done. I can play it back. Okay, just wanna go through the key points from today. Really nice, so easy. Now I click on share, and all I do is actually copy that link. So I would copy that link. We do have the option of downloading the recording as an MP3 file, so that's another option, or even embedding it. But what I would normally do is simply copy the link, come back here, and obviously I would, if I was doing another summary, I would write Russell summary, okay, and then just add the link. When you add the link, make sure that you select it and you click here to make that link active. And that is the way the students could then listen to a summary. Okay, really hope you liked that video. And if you did, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads and loads of content on the opening page, some of the most popular and most recent videos. But you can also click on any of these sections here. If you'd like to keep up with my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. That day, that way you'll keep up with all the webinars, the blogs, the online courses, as well as all the new videos. Of course, you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click on the bell so that you get the updates. And finally, if you were thinking of asking me to do some training with your organization, perhaps in Moodle or using Zoom or working with Camtasia or looking for ways of making your online courses more students focused, then please contact me and you can do that from the website. And thank you very much.